Hey Brooke, what are you playing? Um, a game, but my iPad's almost dead. Is it? Let me see. Uh oh, that's a problem. Let's figure this out. I got an idea. Need some help there? Yeah. Hold the iPad, hold it tight. Yeah, got it. You charging? I, I think oh, so. Oh, we just made it, Brooke. We just made it. All right. Uh, ma'am? What? This was my game? <laughs> what happened to your game? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you died. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Anthony here with We Back Tesla, and we back Tesla because if Tesla fails, EVs fail, and we can't have that. So please consider subscribing, become a part of the solution, and when you make the awesome decision of purchasing your Tesla, you can use our referral link down below and get you some free supercharging. And today I wanna to talk about charging. When I talk to people who've never experienced an electric car, that seems to be the most common theme is like, how are you gonna charge it? Where do you charge it? So hopefully I could touch on some of this stuff today and help alleviate some fears from other people who may be skeptical on the idea of going to an electric car versus a gas car. The three main things that I'm gonna to touch on today is charging at home, charging at public chargers, and charging on the Tesla supercharger network. Now the most common way that people tend to charge is at home in their garage. Now I know that not everybody has a garage. When we get to the public chargers, we'll, we'll touch on that and what that looks like. First thing we'll talk about is the charging at home. And you've got two options. So let me show you what you get in your charging bag when you get your Tesla. All right, so I got my charging bag here. The actual charging cable is over there on the wall. I'll show you guys that here in a minute, but the other accessories and the options of charging at home. This we will touch on later when we go to the public chargers. Say you live in an apartment or something, you probably will be using this a lot. But when we're talking about charging at home, these two guys are what you are gonna care about. So you got this for your normal wall outlet, 120 volt. And then this NEMA 1450 plug for a 240 volt outlet. So what can you do with this guy? How usable is this? Now when we had our Kia Soul EV, this is all we had, and it worked perfectly fine for us. So with this plug, you're able to get about four miles per hour put back on the battery. So that means if you charge your car overnight, at least 10 hours, you can get easily get 40 miles a day put back on your battery overnight while you sleep. And for us, this worked perfectly because my average commute was about 25, 30 miles. So every morning I woke up with all the charge I needed, I would go do my normal commute to work, come home, plug in, wake up in the morning, full charge again. So this can actually work. And charging the Tesla, you get the same four miles per hour charging. And this can work. But this isn't the most optimal thing you can do at home. When we bought our Tesla, we made the jump to the NEMA 1450 plug. So this plug takes a NEMA 1450 outlet, which we got installed in our garage right next to our breaker box. So. Let me show you both of these plugs real quick, show you how quick they charge and what it took for us to get this thing installed when we got our Tesla. All right guys, so I've got the mobile charger that comes with every Tesla and I've got the 120 volt plug uh, adapter attached to it. So you find just any normal outlet in your garage. See so you got power and then push this button, plug it in. Now let's make sure we get what we expect. All right guys, now looking at the charging screen, as you can see, four miles per hour. So this is the normal 120 volt outlet with the 120 volt adapter and your mobile charger that comes with your Tesla. So four miles per hour, and like I said, in any given night, if you charge 
for 10 hours while you sleep, you should wake up and be able to put 40 miles back on your battery pretty easily. So that can work for some situations. All right, now let's talk about the NEMA 1450 plug. Tesla makes it really easy to jump into this realm of charging. All you need to do is see what it will take for you to install this plug in your garage. So let me show you what we had to do. This is our breaker box. As you can see, this is a 100 amp breaker. We have a pretty small 1250 square foot house. And we had one slot open that we could put a 50 amp breaker. Right here, garage, 240 volt. And we were able to just stick it right next to the breaker box. So this setup, getting this breaker and this NEMA 1450 plug cost us $400. I was a little concerned that our breaker box would be too small with the 100 amp service here and we would have to upgrade this. But if your electrical needs in your house are very minimal and you have a spot for the breaker you need, this can work. It worked for us and it's been working great ever since we got it installed. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a stray cat and this cat is freaking nuts. Like. She'll come by and act like she wants to be friendly, but then she'll swat at you. <laughs> and I can't get her off my car. I had to chase this cat out of our house with a broom. Scariest minute of my life. So how many of you guys are cat people? Cause they're, some of them are great. Some of them are freaking nuts. And now I cannot figure out how to get this cat off my Tesla. Oh God. Get out of here. Go. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> uh, somebody help me, please. All right, so I switched out the normal house plug for this NEMA 1450 in the mobile charger. And I'm just gonna stick it in this hole. All right. So now, same procedure. And I just gotta get past this freaking crazy cat. Oh God, I don't know if I can get in my car. Get out of here, please. Okay, quickly. Okay, I made it. All right, now we are charging. And as you can see, the NEMA 1450 gives us 31 miles per hour. And this is perfect. Honestly, I don't see any reason to need to jump up to the next the next option, which is a hardwired charger that will give you about 40 miles per hour. So I can go from zero to 100 in a 10 hour period overnight, easily with just this mobile charger and the NEMA 1450 plug. All right, so here's just a final glimpse at our charging solution now that we have the Tesla. NEMA 1450 plug, mobile charger, and this docking or this cord organizer that we got off Amazon. And I have an ex I have an accessory video that you can go check out. I'll put somewhere on here. Shows you this and some of the other accessories that we got for this Tesla, if you're interested. All right, so say you can't get one of these setups put into your garage or you don't have a garage. Maybe you live in an apartment. There are other options available to you. There's this app called PlugShare that I used and I still use that is backed by a great community of people. They'll help you see what chargers are broken. They'll just give you a really good glimpse into all the public charging situations in your area or to your destination if you're going on a trip. What you can do is you can actually filter out the type of chargers that'll work for your car. So like I had the Kia Soul EV in the past, I could just flip the switches on the certain types of chargers that would work for me. And now that I have a Tesla, that's changed a little bit and I could flip the switches to find chargers that will work for the Tesla. But you can go through to the chargers and they'll be rated to show you if they're broken, if people have been complaining about them recently. So you get an idea of what you're getting into if you need to go to that charger that day. If people have recently reviewed it, you can say, oh, this one's actually been just fine for the past month. Or you can say, oh, this one's broke down. And sometimes even like the companies like EVgo or ChargePoint, sometimes they'll even have people comment on there saying, hey, this is down for repair. Hopefully we'll have it back in a month or something like that. So this app is very helpful and it definitely opens your eyes to see, holy crap, there's actually a lot of places that I can go charge my car 
out in the public. And bonus, a lot of these places, if you go hunting for them, are actually free. So you can get some free charging just every few days. Go to one of these chargers, find the ones that are free, plug in and go walk down somewhere close and do some work. We're gonna head to some of these chargers and hopefully give you an idea what it takes to go charge at a public charging spot. So let's go. All right guys, so I just made it down to the first of two public chargers that I wanna show you and talk to you about. But before I do, the charging at home, what we just talked about, the cost of that, I ran the numbers, cost me about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. So if I were to drive about 12,000 miles a year, it cost me about $400 a year to power my car if I only charged it at home, 100%. But you probably won't only charge at home. And a good example of this is when I first got our Kia Soul EV on PlugShare, I started looking at all the public chargers. And this is one that I commonly use that's right across the street from our mall. And this is free for anyone to use. So I see a lot of Nissan Leafs, Chevy Volts, Chevy Bolts. Cause when there's free juice, you gotta take it. It also started raining right now, but I'm committed to making this video at the moment. So let's go out there and see how much juice we can get out of this charger. All right, so what we need is the little handy dandy adapter that I had showed you guys earlier that Tesla gives you. And a lot of these public chargers use this style plug. So let me show you. All right, so got the adapter on there. Let's just open the charge port, plug it in with the adapter, and let's get in the car out of the rain. Ooh, look at that. God, that's one of the coolest things in the world. All right, so this charger, we're able to get 26 miles per hour. So if we switch this to energy, this pulls about six kilowatts. I wish it showed all this information without having to toggle back and forth. There's plenty of room on this screen. Elon, if you're listening, which you're probably not, figure that out. I want all the information. All right, so that was just one public charger example, one that happened to be free, which is a bonus. Not too far down the road, there's another place where I can charge this car that's more Tesla specific. It has three Tesla destination chargers. So let's go down there, let's see what that's like and see what kind of charge we can get out of that. I made it down to the public charger number two and there's two reasons why I like this charger. Because they have Tesla specific destination chargers and on the other side of this hotel, there's a bowling alley and I'm kind of a nerd and I like to bowl. Any Jason Belmonte, anybody know who that is? No, crickets? All right, well let's look at this. So as you can see, I'm pulling about seven kilowatts, which is very similar to the other one that I was charging with. So this is about 28 miles an hour. Well, let's see. Whoops. Yep, 28 miles an hour. Thank you, Bank of Colorado. So there's also some food over here. I think there's Taco Bell right here and then bowling. So I can plug in here, go bowling for an hour or two, like a loser all by myself, and I could get some free juice. So. There are plenty of places out in many cities where you can get a free charge. And if you don't have the opportunity to charge at home, you can still get into an EV and just every few days, go park at one of these stations, plug in and do something for a few hours, like do some work at the Starbucks, go bowling like I do, but it's completely worth it. These cars are amazing. So now that I've showed you a couple of the public charger situations that I have in my area and there's probably a lot in your area that are very similar, I, I would suggest just downloading that app even if you don't have an EV. Just download the PlugShare app and, and just look around and play with it, see where all your charges are, maybe just go drive by those and see other people who have parked there and are charging. Interact with them if you're if you're at all curious about getting into an EV. That's what I did before we bought our Kia Soul EV. I wanted to see what the charging situation looked like. Go, download the app, and just look around. 
there are a lot of opportunities to charge not just at home and it's really easy to do so the two things we've touched on so far are the home charging with the tesla mobile charger using a normal 120 outlet and a 240 volt nemo 1450 I've also talked about going to public chargers, which you can use the J plugs with the adapter that Tesla gives you or find a Tesla destination charger. And the last thing I want to talk about is Tesla superchargers, since that's what I drive and that's what we're talking about. I just did a video on that, so I'll just touch on that briefly. You can go check out that video. I did a test with the standard range plus you can't seem to charge higher than 100 kilowatts, which at peak is like 440 miles an hour, I think, which is plenty fast if you ask me. The longer range Model 3s can take more power at once. And so the Tesla superchargers, the, the version two, are now 150 kilowatt chargers. And when version three comes online, they will be 250 kilowatts, which your Model 3, if you have a long range, will be able to take advantage of at peak times. The standard range plus for now, I think is limited to about 100 kilowatts regardless which again with the smaller battery pack seems to me not to be a big issue supercharging is mainly for doing trips you can use it as your primary source of charging it's not recommended mainly because of the advanced battery degradation that you will probably see if you solely supercharge but even then i've had people tell me that's all they did was supercharge and their battery degradation was very minimal so I think in, in normal scenarios, if you use a supercharger for doing longer trips than your normal commutes, then you have nothing to worry about. They're absolutely awesome. That's one thing Tesla has a huge advantage over any other electric car is their supercharger network. That's continually growing, it's improving, and it works really well. It's just plug and play. You just plug it in, it automatically charges your account. There's no fumbling with key fobs or accounts or apps like the EVgo app or ChargePoint app. All you do is just plug it in, go to the bathroom, go grab some food, come back and continue on your trip. So that's just a brief discussion on the third way of charging, which is Tesla superchargers. All right, guys, I hope some part of this was at least a little bit helpful to you guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. We talked about charging, charging at home, charging on public chargers, how to find public chargers and the supercharging network that Tesla offers. If there's any questions you have about this model specific, the Tesla Model 3 Santa Range Plus, or just EVs in general, please leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys. Please consider subscribing. Thank you again. I'll see you guys in the next one.